everybody uh, today we've got a recorded zoom tutorial that we had with a group uh, Joe Bellini at Recycled Parts for Heart uh, organized this and I'll be looking at uh, a beginner's watercolor painting and a few other exercises that you can do with that so i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you at the end of the video hopefully hello everyone just want to welcome you to today's zoom it is may 18th and we have ian jackson presenting watercolor 101 so uh the basic watercolor um procedures and he um, has a reference photo that we sent out in an email uh, earlier this week with a, a traceable uh, picture as well so that you don't have to sketch out a drawing. And so um, we got off to a little bit of a rough start with the recording, so that's why it looks like we've done some things already. We did. <laughs> Ian's going to catch us up. Yeah. Um, on what's on this watercolor paper at this moment. And I'm just glad that we realized the recording wasn't recording. So uh, mm -hmm. there you go, Ian, just catch us up quickly. Sorry about that. So basically what I did is uh, I was showing you how watercolor is slightly different to heavy body paint, uh, where you use, a, in heavy body painting, you will use a, a, a like a, a brushing process with I'll just show you briefly with uh, watercolor uh, it's more like you're using your brush as a drop a dropper so I'll get me get me a pen so I've wet the I've, I've wet the surface there with lots of water and I'm gonna go you see how that went like that? And, and, and that really I, I'm not brushing I'm, I'm just dropping water into it, that just dropping um, paint into it. So really that's the difference between heavy body paint uh, brushing and, and watercolour. And what you do is you let that dry and you build up glazes slowly but surely. That's but, really interesting. Uh, so another technique that we just had a look at is is uh, th that's wet into wet because I've put I put wet paint into a wet surface, right? Another technique you can use is called uh, wet, i.e. the paint's wet on a dry surface, and this is what happens when you get a, a dry surface. You get a you, you do with with that, you do do more brushing as you would do traditionally with um, oil paints and acrylics because there's no vehicle to mm -hmm. make it move, i.e. the water. You have to make it move. So do that's you, called you use wet one, on dry. Do you typically use one um, technique over the other or do you just... You know, it, 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 it's, it's a multitude of different... different um, effects and uh, knowing which one works best for which circumstance. Okay, we've got a lot to so, learn. Uh, well, that, so they are the two basic setups that, uh, what, basically they are the, the two techniques. Okay. You either use wet on wet, on wet or wet on dry. All right. One thing uh, I did mention earlier, but, uh, we had to restart, but uh, using uh, tissue paper or toilet roll or whatever, and, uh, and what we've been doing there is is a, a a way of controlling water. That's how you control water. You either make you either make a pool of water and you drop your paint into it, or you do it dry brush where it's controlled. But if you've got a bit too much water. On your paper, or you you want to take some of the paint away from your paper, you use your tissue paper and you just blot it, and it stops it and gets rid of it. 
And that's how you control water, because a lot of people uh, say that they find watercolour difficult because they can't control the water. Well, this is how you control your water. So now we're going to move on to one or two techniques, right, on how to uh, apply paint, right? Watercolour is applied in glazes. Um, it, uh, in what are called washers, which are thin glazes of transparent paint. All right. Now, I want to first of all start with the, the, a basic one. And, and that is, is called a flat wash. And it's called a flat wash. I'm going to show you what it does. You, you load your water up, you get, get some paint on it, make sure that's got plenty of blood in your brush and you go across and don't lift it up you go like that keep going and don't lift it up keep going and there you go that's what's called a flat wash because it remains the same all the way around that all depends on on, on how much you paint, uh, how much paint your brush can hold, and it has to be a very wet paint, right? That's a flat wash. Let me see if I can uh, find a pencil or something. I have a question, Ian. Yeah. Do you spray uh -huh. your um, watercolor paints with water before you start? You, uh, I personally don't, but certain. Certain paints, especially student paints, may need to be activated again. Okay. You can do that. Thank you, Ian. But I, was just I personally don't, uh, because because I mean I I, I use professional paints. Okay. Uh, and they activate quite easily with without. All you need to do is literally just put a blob of water on that paint. Mm -hmm. See if you react if you're spraying and reactivating them all, that might weaken the solution of the paint. Okay. So all you need to do is just put a blob of water in the paint that you're going to use at that one time. Mm -hmm. So, but but then again, it is a way of doing it. All right. So that one there is a flat wash. Flat wash, okay. All right, and that is because it's 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 totally the same all way down all the way, mm -hmm. right? Your next one is like a flat wash. It's called a graduated wash, right? Now, remember what I did with that last time, right? I, I, I went I went so far along, didn't I? And I, I didn't lift it off. I went straight down and, and continued on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift that off I'm going to weaken the solution by making it wet with water and I'm going to continue on to the next level. Yeah. And then I'm going to weaken it again and continue on and weaken it like that. And then wet again and weaken it like that. And then wet again. And can you notice what's happening? I don't know whether my camera can pick it up properly. Yes, it, we can see it. It's getting lighter and lighter, paler and yeah, paler. Exactly. So this one, because I'm 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 lifting it up uh, and putting applying water and then going with that like that, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter until eventually it gets to the point where it's basically water. In fact, one more stroke is probably where it'll be. There you go, it's just water now. So that is good. This one here is good for skies. Okay. And that's the one that is used a lot for skies. And that is called... Uh, funny we should be talking about graduation because it's called... a. Uh, if I can spell it. I've got it in front of me and I can't even spell it. That's okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's graduated. Welcome to Planet Dyslexia. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, graduated or uh, gradated. Okay. 
uh, gradient wash. That one's that. Now, there's another wash you can do that's similar to that, but it, it's a slightly different technique. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to do exactly the same as I did last time. Ah. Right. <clears throat> I'm taking notes here, Ian. <laughs> right, I'm, uh, well, you can go back and watch the video, can't you? Yes, I can. I've, I've, stopped, I've stopped at a certain point, and mm -hmm. very quickly, a, a bit away from it, I'm going to get a completely different colour. Right? About there. Right? Let's see if I can get it, make that a bit stronger. I'm going to bring it up just short of it. And then what I'm going to do is get the water, uh, get some water on it and bring that down and blend those two areas. Oh. I am so glad we're recording this. Yes. <laughs> because I'm and like that, so confused. That is called a variegated wash. Mm -hmm. That's where two separate colours are blended into each other. Yeah? Yeah. You write that one down. I'm doing yeah. it with you, Ian. If I can uh, spell variegated. There. And you can look all these words up, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube that will explain these in much more detail. Literally, this is like 101. Okay. Uh, so, uh, right, so there's one last uh, type of wash, and it's not very often used, this one. But what I'm going to do, remember, remember, before I do anything else, uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this water, because one thing you've got to do is make sure you've got fairly clean water. So I'm going to put that there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's see if I've got a, a clean thing. I'm totally organised today. And I'm going to put some more water out. Right. So, right. The next, the next thing is. Uh, so it's, it, the next one is similar to that. But what, remember what I did with wet on wet? Mm -hmm. I, I made an area. So I'm going to make a, a block there. I'm going to make sure it's thoroughly wet. You can't see that at the moment. but I'm, I'm, I can see that that's wet. Very, very wet. It, it has a very glazed feel on it there. Right? So... You know how I did like a brush stroke and then brought it all together with water? So uh, with this one, which is called a wetting wet glaze, you do this. Oh, different colours. And you let it naturally... Now, Ian, are you are you being careful to uh, as to what colors you're choosing, so you don't make mud, or no? Uh, not at this moment in time, because I mean, you can easily make mud. Mud, mud is easy. So, <laughs> it, it, uh, mud mud tends to be tends to be made uh, when you get to uh, is it contrasting colors? Okay. I think yeah. Uh, and and. Oh, this is super fun. This is. Holy moly. Are, are you following on here? Yeah. I wasn't right. So, So that is, is, is a wet in wet wash where where you can, uh, you, uh, you literally, you wet your paper and you drop your colours in and you, and I'm just putting water in now. Like that. Just, uh, and you know what? You can make some, cracking backgrounds off of these Ooh. like that uh, uh, and the good one, one thing to keep in mind if you want to avoid uh, mud is just keep it 
keep it to a one or two basic colours. So, you know, don't overdo it with the... Uh, uh, and the more you... Look, see that now as it's, as, as it's nice and colourful. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how you can make that into mud. Mm -hmm. Just mixing it all together, okay. Yeah, once, once you've mixed it all together, it becomes a neutralised... That's why you don't do... That's why you don't do brush strokes like that mm -hmm. in watercolour. Because once you start agitating the paint and stopping it from naturally flowing, that's when it becomes a problem and it becomes mud. Mm. You've got a classic mud there. Now, I'd, you, I'd use that mm -hmm. as, a, as a neutralizing tone for various things, but it's, that's another, another lesson for another day. Okay. Um, so, okay then, right, so that get rid of that as well now uh that is oh sorry i haven't written that down on it have i um where's my pencil gone oh there it is so this is uh wet in wet so right. they're the two basic things one is one is your uh, control, and two is your application. Okay, Ian. Thank you for those two words. One is control. Yeah. What? So you control your water by either doing it wet in wet, or uh, w uh, wet on dry, and that's your control. Or, or if you've got too much water, you use your tissue paper mm -hmm. right um, once, once you've learnt those three things you learn to apply it your paint in these different uh, applications flat which is one all the way like that a gradated one where you go across once lift apply water across again, lift, apply water, across again, so on and so forth. And then you do a similar kind of thing for variegated, where you go across one, get another colour, across one, and mix together with water. That's variegated. And then a wet in wet technique where you drop painting. And they're your applications, and they're, the col they're how watercolour paintings are done. That's how you do it's it. a very good demonstration, Ian. This yeah. is Mary. Very good demonstration of the different ways that that can be done. It sure mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Cool. So we're done, they're, right? the, they're the foundations. Fair enough. Artists do use their own techniques that they've picked up, but this is the foundation of how to uh, start with watercolor painting, and if you can. It, it, if you can gain control of this particular, uh, practice this a lot. Mm -hmm. Once you've got this practice, you can do any watercolour painting. It's just a matter of you being expressive with colour. I have a question. To be able to make, make a start with the demo. Well, I have a question before you start with the demo. Um, uh -huh. How do you know which technique to use? Do you just... I don't know. Are you winging it or what? Are we going to uh, see that well, now? A lot of it's experimentation until you get used to, uh, like the sky. Mm -hmm. If you see the sky and it, uh, I mean, some some artists like to do wet in uh, wet in wet and get a certain type of feel. Mm -hmm. Other artists like to do wet on dry and get a, a, a different type of feel. It all depends on what feel you want in your painting at any one time. Okay. So There's so no getting it wrong. Once you've got, once you've got the techniques uh, under control, there's no getting it wrong. How you express yourself is your okay. expression. All right, do you, do you start at a particular place? After yes, you, you do. Yeah. With, a, with a painting, you do, yeah. Okay. I, I personally do. Okay. Uh, and um, most of the watercolorists do. And, the, and, and there's another thing. Um, 
like I have Daniel Smith watercolor sticks and you yeah. can apply, you can do that either way. You can, if you look at my, mm. my other screen, you can mm. work off of the stick yes, you can you put can. It on your paper and work off of it. You can put it yeah. on dry and work off of it. Mm. You can make a little wet puddle and work off of it. Mm. So there's also, also different types of watercolor too. That's Sometimes you can get well, watercolor I'm, I'm gonna... bottles that's already, um, already diluted you can buy watercolor in the little bottles too yeah uh, uh, yeah glad you brought that uh, up. we're, we're going to look at that in a second the tools and equipment we're going to need okay so that yeah that, i'm glad you remind reminded me of those because they are they're not they're not what are considered to be purest watercolors those they are a, a derivative of them but they are uh, uh, like uh, murray says uh they they are watercolor tools that can give you watercolor painting kind of effects yes mm -hmm. right one of the most important things about getting a good quality watercolor what will help you most with your watercolor painting you might think oh i'll go out and i'll buy the best quality paints well yeah that will help you but not half as much as what getting a good quality paper will okay if you have a d you know i'm not saying go out and buy arches and paint on arches i'm not at all mm -hmm. but there are quality papers out there that you can um get that you can practice on and learn on uh, I, I learned to paint on bookingford by st cuffton st cuthbert's mill right it, it, it's not a it's not a, a cotton paper it's a cellulose paper but it's a very high quality one and it's not expensive either but it, as you learn it just go out and put a little bit of money into uh, some reasonable quality watercolor paper now watercolor paper uh, there's all sorts of different weights and different you might hear the expression hot press, cold press. Uh, it all depends on how rough your surface you want it to be. If, it, if, if you want it really, really smooth, you want hot press. If you want it to have a slightly rougher surface, you want it to be cold press. And, and those two bits of paper uh, come in different weights. You might hear the expression 140 pound. 90 pound 200 pound well that's the different thicknesses of paper and th the thicker the paper is the less likely it is to buckle and bend when you wet it which is not what you want it to do so that's your paper but uh, what what thoughts have you got you guys got on paper because i don't know what you guys use over at usa mm, let's see i'm using um what is it 140 oh. pound right i'm using uh -huh. strathmore uh, watercolor paper in a in a book strathmore well strathmore are a known company i can see some the langton is it prestige there colleen or is it is it langton i've never heard hey of it. i tell you what yeah. that's one of my favorite papers that colleen it really is lovely paper so uh it's got a nice crisp uh, which one is it is it the, is it the uh, row can't quite see that it says she says Dale or Rowney. It says hundred percent cotton. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not telling people to go. If people can afford it to practice on, then fair enough. But um, if you if you're a starter and a beginner, just use cellulose paper. But Did yeah, I mean that is a great paper. What uh, what Colleen's using? It's cracking paper. I love it. Colleen, are you, are you in the United States? Hmm? Is she in the United States? I'm wondering. I've never seen that paper. Is oh, that De La Roni have been making nice paper for many, many years. Okay. So, um, thank you. Yeah. So, um, right. So, what I want to do first is, um, is 
I've got a board, right? A piece of board, and it's important that you have a little board like this, because sometimes you might want to lift your paper up and go like that, and move the water around. You know, like you do on a, a, a an acrylic pour to make it move a bit. You do that with watercolour in sometimes, but today we're just going to leave it flat. So uh, I've got my board, and I'm going to put this down. Everything's going all over the place. I'm going to I'm going to tape this down there. Some people like to tape it down all the way around, but because I'm a skinny person, I'm just going to do it on ends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, so in particular um, what kind of tape? Yeah, so I've got this I've got this uh decorator's tape. Okay. Uh some people sometimes use uh what do they call it? That crafters tape thing. Washi tape. Okay. Although that can come up, so be very careful we're using that. Um so literally at these ends I'm I'm going normally you go all the way around it like that. I'm not gonna do that today. Because I don't want a crisp edge because I'm not going near the edge anywhere. I'm gonna put that down. And what this will do is when it gets wet, it will help it help the paper to remember where it was because when it dries it'll go back down to where it were right that must be really boring watching this like this i'm sure you know how to do all this stuff but i didn't know so basically, a couple more places here and there, just to make sure. If if you do your painting and you don't uh, work right to the end, uh, that helps because I, I'm going to try and keep it as much as I possibly can into the centre at painting. Yeah, a couple more there. Preparation is key. <laughs> and we're virtually ready. Right. So, you, 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 like I say, you can either go all the way around with it if you've got loads of tape. Or you can just do what I've done there. Um right so are we all clear with that i've got me 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 image uh, me paper um masked down onto the um onto the paper right this is where you this is where your picture comes in that you you know that the uh traceable or uh, the the drawing. Now, if you're not confident about drawing, this is a way to do it. But if if you want to draw it on, then fair enough. But today, so I've got. Let's pretend that this is a printout. It isn't. It's a. It's a. Um, I'll literally do it off of the screen onto a piece of tracing paper. So what I'm going to put this out of the way a second while we do this next bit. So I'm going to get, you can either use coloured chalk or a stick of graphite like this or, or a pencil and and you just go over the areas where, where you're drawing it, making sure that you've, you've done everywhere. Oops, you know. I mean, if you want to be extra careful about it, you can... Uh, go over all of it but you know I don't want to spend all day doing this
what I would normally do is just do all of it. Yeah, do like that. So what you're doing is you're making yourself, I mean, you could use that uh, transfer paper over the top of it if you wanted. And like I said, uh, if you haven't got anything like a graphite stick, use a coloured piece of, um, a coloured piece of chalk. But just be careful how you use it. Um, Ian, does that matter if that piece of graphite that you're using is water soluble or non soluble? Does it, it matter? It's, it's irrelevant. I mean, not naturally, uh, uh, graphite is uh, is non soluble naturally. You can get some graphite that is. So all we're doing is we're using it to transfer this image. Okay. You know the printout that you will. I assume you guys will have a printout, mm -hmm. right? You. On the back of your printout, you just need to cover it all, you know, like that. Okay. Or uh, if you've got some tracing paper, just put some tracing paper on the back of it. And, and then, so I, I think that's all done, I think. Right. I'm going to bring my picture back in now. And I'm going to centre it on this paper. Now, I've already gone to the great length of... Um, Putting some marks. So, um, Ian, I have a question. Yeah. When uh -huh. you're watercoloring over this, these lines are going to keep showing after you. No, work. because you you're only going to put it on very light. Uh huh. So, um, uh, so uh, you're not going to put it on that hard that it. Uh, in fact, strangely enough, some watercolorists like to show the pencil work in their art as well. So it, it, some t it depends. Uh, but if, if it's too strong, before you start painting, just nip it down with a rubber. Okay. I was going to say that too, that some watercolors, it's a very, it's, it's part of a rel uh, watercolor technique to leave some of the pencil lines yeah. in there. Oh, okay. So, so, so uh, I mean, uh, yeah, um, it, it it does add to the actual image, but sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You'll find that you 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 will find that it the will cover over vast majority. So what I'm doing is I, I put it where I want it. I'm going to get some more of that masking tape if I can find end of this. Here we are. Oh dear, what's happened with this? Just a second, I'm having some technical difficulties with my masking tape. Who would have known? <laughs> right, Naturally. Sure. Naturally, while you're on the air, you're going to have de technical difficulties. <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to put that on, on my paper there. On, on my tracing and stick it down like that and put one there. So what you've done is you've created an inch. Oh. Right. Let's say I'm halfway through a drawing. That means you don't have to hold it like that. And, and, and or right. that it's not moved. It won't move because I've got it taped down. And if I want to go and look and go, Oh, I've missed that bit. It's not going to move. So I can go over it. So uh, let's now start doing this. Um, I just want to try and get a, a normal pencil if I can find one. I'm going to be very quickly. Uh, pencil. Why can I not find anything? I don't need that now. Um, yeah, I'm just going to use this. It, 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 one of the best tools for doing this is uh, one that's run out, a pen that's run out. Um, so basically, I'm just going to go around certain areas.
Mary, how, how did you get yours down on the page? Did you just sketch it on? If you've got the confidence to sketch it on, by all means, do it. So, literally, you're following, you're following all these guidelines. Yes, I, I'm sorry, Barb. I, I had to go back into my Zoom because I'm, I'm actually, I actually did sketch it on because I couldn't print it off. So um, I am, my paper is wider. I'm working on 9 by 15. Ah. So I sketched it on with a water-soluble pen, which kind mm -hmm. of uh, eases those lines out a little. It doesn't yeah. erase them entirely. Oh, okay. That's and good. I did tape it down. I taped it down to the back of a cardboard uh -huh. piece. Mary's a very competent uh, drawer, aren't you? Yeah, drawing's my skill. I won't say watercolor is, Ian, but uh, drawing is something that I am very comfortable with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm if not perfect, it, I'm just comfortable. I, I'm, I'm only doing this because I, I'm aware that there are certain people who uh, don't have an awful lot of confidence in the, in the drawing. Yeah, and, and, and that was a good thing to do, Ian. That was really a good thing to do. I, I'm going to put myself back on mute. Actually, do you know do you know what I'm looking into a lot more these days? It's called direct painting. I don't know if you know what that is. That that's where you don't have a drawing at all. You just go direct to the uh, to the to the substrate, the paper or whatever you're doing, and you paint directly on it without any drawing. Now it's it, it, obviously it's a lot easier if you're doing things that are simple, but you know I've seen some people do some of, of these kinds of pieces of art with no drawing at all, and they're absolutely fantastic pieces of work. So it's something I'm definitely trying to look at, but obviously it, it, uh, it, it's for those people who probably have, have got a bit more confidence and experience in the in their art than most people definitely so, um i've got to say i've had to go at it myself and uh, i've had mixed uh mixed things happen <laughs> some have turned out fine and some have turned out not as well as i ought, ought to have turned <laughs> out so as you can see i'm literally i'm, I'm still drawing all this out it, it is a long slow process this but we will read well, I went ahead one. and um, braved, braved it and sketched it. Well, that's good because at the end of the day, if you can do that, that every time you do a sketch and a drawing, it it helps your muscle memory. Yes, it does. So, so be able to draw something like that again in the future, and, and the more you practice drawing, the easier it gets. It's like any art, really. You get to a stage where you're pretty competent after a while with it. And uh, it, 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 what was once a, a massive challenge to you becomes pretty standard practice. So I, I wouldn't overly concern myself if I couldn't do something straight away. It's just a matter of getting your brain in gear. Uh, mind you, with me, that takes many, many thousands of years. So, <laughs> right, so roughly, hopefully that's uh, that's done it. I, I've got my picture onto my, um, onto my paper. Let us see. Cool. Yeah, it is. Now, the reason why I've got it taped down is because I can see areas that I've I've not done. So I can I can go back down now, I can put it back down and I can see for a fact that I've not done that one. What which other one did to do? That one. Now that might be because I didn't put now nah, that's because I didn't put no thing on that. I missed it. I'm gonna just put that there. I mean, it, minor things like that you can adjust on paper anyway. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything I need. All right, this here I didn't put I didn't put any on this side. 
I mean, it's not critical that there, but let's see. Uh, because thing is, I want to. I want this to be fluid anyway. Uh, so I'm. I'm not going to be following the pencil marks too much. Right. It. Uh, no, I'll, uh, I've missed a bit there, but uh, I'll put that in in a second. So once you're happy with it, you've got everything that you want. Take it off. Oh dear. Excuse me. Right. So we're ready now to to paint. Time to paint. So can everybody see everything that I'm doing from there? Yeah. Unfortunately, because I'm zoomed in, uh, you're not going to see some of the palette. It's not important. I'll try and explain what colours I'm using. And at the end of the day, colours are irrelevant. You can use whatever colours you want, as long as you keep the tonal values right. Because <coughs> that's more important. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk to you about the tool that we use. Right? Uh, what sort of tools you guys have you got? Uh, uh, do do you have at least one of these? Yes. Yes. That, 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 that's a, a pointed brush, right? Now, that's one. I got this little kit of uh, colors. Traditionally, these are mops and these, these are for covering large areas. That's an oval. That's that. Ooh, what am I doing? That's an oval, and that's a, a big mop. Oh. Yeah. Now, if you have if, if you have them, fine, fair enough. Yeah. But if you haven't, Ian, do you use any flats when you watercolor? Occasionally, yeah. Um, that 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 that's a flat, but. Problem is with flats is you get very very strong edges with them. Okay. Uh, we don't necessarily want the, the, okay. these create much more fluffier, softer edges, especially know. when you're talking about doing sky. Yeah. So if you haven't got anything else, that will do one of these. But you've got to you've got to recognise that those edges there will create a very crisp edge and you don't necessarily want that oh, I uh, but your best uh, i mean some other brushes that are worth thinking about a filbert if you've got a filbert like that a might work but we're doing a quite a large area here, so what what brushes have you got that are, are like a mop, a, a large brush that's a mop? I found this one completely unused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that that one, uh, uh, that one, that will be fine, Nadia. Yeah, that's a great brush. Uh, Colleen, they they're fine as well. Just put your brushes at what you've got, and then I'll know. I got these guys. This needs to uh, total along a little bit, and yeah, yeah uh, the one that has the white, white bristly bit, uh, Barbara. That'll be great. Cool. Uh, any one of them, any one of them will do, uh, uh, Jerry. Cool. The larger, the better for right. The, the, the larger the better. Okay. The, the technique you start with, 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 with watercolour, you start large and work slowly but surely smaller as you get more detailed. Okay. That's the technique with watercolour. So I'm, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this uh, oval one. But what, what you have as a big brush is up to you. All right. So. The first thing that you do, right, what you do is you work from farthest away to, to nearest to you. And then that gives you your sense of depth. 
but what we're, what we're going to work with is something called atmospheric perspective. Now, what that is, is something closer to you has more definition and more colour oh, right. than something in the background. You might have seen mountains. The farthest away mountain will be very, very grey. The closest mountain, you might see the grass on the mountain that's green. So the closer it gets, the more detail you see. So, and that's the same with the sky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this like a, a, a sky area up here, kind of semi-wet, semi-dry. Now, so I'm going to go... Still got some paint in it, huh? There you go. Okay, so you're doing the wet on the sky. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm getting it all wet and watery there. I'm going to go get some more water. Right. And then I'm going to start applying a, a strong coat at this end, right? With the painting, I, do you know what? Before I go any farther, I need to put the actual uh, image up on my computer because I don't know what I'm what it is I'm painting. <laughs> Right. Oh no. Ian, do you have to work fast because it's dry? Uh, you, you, you do, yeah. To some degree. You have, you, with certain things, you have to work really fast. Okay. So, right. You may, well, that's why you put plenty of water on. Don't, don't, um, don't be stingy with the water. Get tons on. Loads. It, it's watercolour paper. It needs water. Look how much water I'm putting on. All right. So you are putting a lot of water on. So like if it starts to dry then, out, is that okay? And we'll just put more water? Well, if it's got that glaze of water on it, you can work with it. Okay. So I, I'm going to get me paint now, my blue paint, which is generally ultramar ultramarine blue, which is a standard sky. I'm going to work from this end and go and um, right atmospheric perspective is it light on this right is coming from this direction that's where that so things in this area are going to be lighter than things in that area i'm going to get some more in And don't worry about um, skies being slightly streaky, because if you've ever noticed, skies are slightly streaky, even the blue areas. They're, ne they're never one light natural colour, just one blank colour. I've never seen a sky that's just one blank colour. There's always slight differences in the sky. And I'm, I'm going to come down a certain amount not too heavy into what is basically the, the cloud area. And that there then becomes the skyline where the land is. So I'm coming down there and right, that's all that area done. I, I might just now take um, Right, I'm going to get get me a uh, toilet roll and lighten that up a bit. And, and where my clouds are, where I want my clouds, scrunch it up into a scrunchie and go. Now I might have to do this a couple of three times. That for speed, I mean, you, you just think, uh, I wouldn't normally do this, but 
uh, I'm going to use my uh, heat gun. If you've got an heat gun, do it. But I wouldn't normally do this. But we're on limited time and I've got several layers to do. So, heat gun! Right, that's dried enough so that I can put another layer on it. If I could find my brush. How come things vanish in front of your eyes? I can't believe I can't find it. I've watched the brush. You haven't gone far, Ian. You didn't get up. <laughs> Do you use um, white for the white stuff or do no. you just leave it empty? No, 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 no. You don't ever, ever, ever use white. Okay. <laughs> uh, there are certain elements of using white uh, that you can do in certain other techniques, but for this, no, because all it'll do is make it look opaque and it just will not look right. Okay. So that's, that's still wet, <laughs> but... I'm going to introduce an element of uh, dryness to it. Uh, so I'm just doing dry paint now on slightly wet. So I'm going to go... It needs to be a little bit, little bit wetter. And uh, look, I'm not, I'm not being, uh, I'm not being overly deliberate about this. Yeah. And that's sky done. Roughly. Well, sort of. Okay. <laughs> so, on, on, only thing I'm going to do, right, it, let's have a look at um, the fact that this, the, the sun is coming from that direction. Right, so where would the be on the clouds? Where would the grey areas be that, mm. that, that are in shade? So I'm gonna I'm gonna tap this. I, I, I'm gonna make a grey, horrible grey colour, a dull grey colour. I think dull grey sky, right? Uh, which you, you can do by just mixing lots of different colours together. You get a neutrally grey, and and then you can put a little bit of purple in it just to add a little bit of colour. Right, and this needs to be fairly dry in the in the application. And you go, oh, gray. You know, I don't have a black or white in my kit. You, you shouldn't need to. If 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 if, if, um, if, if, um, if you want to make black, right? I'll show you. I'll I'll show you how to easily make black without. Without it being a, a big issue, All right? Let's Actually, I've got some on my on my thing here. Mm -hmm. So, colors. The best and easiest way to make black, right? Is, is if you've got some burnt umber, uh, burnt umber brown, which is a dark brown. Mm -hmm. right? It's a dark brown there, like that. Let me. Uh, And then get some ultramarine blue. And there you go, black. And that's the reason why people don't use a black paint. It's too stark, it's too, too strong. You can use black for um tinting certain colors perfect thank you 
But <laughs> so exciting. That, that, that's the easiest way to make black. And, and it, I mean, we are the earthy tones like burnt umber and burnt sienna and yellow ochre. It works perfectly. So, anyway. And we want to come under. So, I'm not being overly precise today with my painting. I'm working quite fast here. I'll just... Uh, In certain areas, right, you need to have things called lost and found edges, right? What that means, for example, if you look, look at that there, that's quite a strong edge. So if I get a brush and I paint into it and it takes that edge away. Okay. And, and you find edges that... You can soften. You don't soften every edge. Right. You, you look and say, does that need to be softened? Can I? And you can put several layers of this grey on it and build it up. I'm, I'm being fairly abstract today, to be honest with you. It's, it's, I want to move on to... The sky is important. But I want to move on to other matters. Um... I think that needs to be done. This is so cool. Right. Is everything so, done? So, as, as, far, as far as I'm concerned, that's the sky done. Right? Got it. Making sure, and I will make sure, that your sky is totally dry, I'm going to move on to this distant landscape here All right so i'm just gonna eat bun around that area i wouldn't normally do this i'd let it just dry naturally but um Uh, in this circumstance, I'm going to, I'm going to heat gun it. Right. That'll be fine. Um, right. Moving on to another, another brush. And use whatever brushes you've got, a smaller brush, because we're doing this little area now. All right. Again, we're going to use that same principle of this, these hills here are closer than what that set of hills are and that set of hills are. So these are going to be vibrant in colour and, and they are going to be less and less and less until you get to a grey. Oh. And maybe that's, that's, that's what I'll probably do first, actually. Let's mix a grey colour that's slightly darker than that grey above there. See if I can uh, tease it into being a bit more greyer. That's it. So, and you might say, oh well, that landscape isn't grey, it isn't. But, believe me. Oh, and don't, don't worry about that being dark there at the moment, because it will, it will go lighter. You, you'll be surprised how um, like that goes right so using that grey again I'm going to introduce a teeny weeny little bit of uh, yellow to it a bit more grey in again because this one here this, this hill and I'm going to dab like that And as we get far away, I'm going to make that um, make, make that colour less pronounced. Okay. Right, so we start establishing more colour now as we get closer. Right. 
and I'm not brushing, I'm, I'm just putting water uh, in, a, in areas and, and dropping it in. So your, your next area is that. And Ian, you're, you're not wetting the paper first, right? Again. Some, sometimes I am, like that, for example. Okay. Right? And sometimes I'm just dry brushing it in, and that's to get different textures. Okay. All right, so, because all this is really background, you don't need to do a huge amount of colour. Uh, and as you get closer, as I said, you, you, um, you get more creative with... Uh, colour and tonal value so in, in, as we get to here I'm going to make this bit of the hill much more colourful um, plenty of water on All right and I believe that comes right down does it come round have I made a mess of that no I'm alright Right, so all that's wet, as you can see there. Um, and you, you create valleys and gullies and things like that, innit? Blah, 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 blah. There could be trees in background. Uh, So what that's done is created a, a, a background that's got <clears throat> a, 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 it's gone from being quite colourful there into the distance more and more as you get far away and it's got less and less uh, uh, colour value and it's just when it's got to there it's become just a grey. Now, you can, to some degree, right, uh, we're going to move on to doing the, um, doing the sea now. You don't see an awful lot of the sea in this. But before I go any farther, because I don't want uh, that bit of land there uh, blending into the sea area, I'm going to eat gun that. Because you don't want it happening. You may need to go over this at some point. In fact, it will need a, probably another layer. How's everybody getting on? That's all I have to say about that. A giggle. Took too much off. Oh, maybe not. Don't quit your day job yet, Jerry. <laughs> uh, how are we doing for time? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I don't know. I didn't even look at the time. It's 2.30. Uh, we have an hour and a half. An hour and a half? Yeah. Yeah, we'll get finished. Right, so I'm going to mix up a, again some ultramarine blue. Right, and I'm going to go across this little, there's a little bit here that you see of the, uh, of the uh, water. I assume this is a, a, like a lock in Scotland or something like that. I think it is anyway. And, and, and then there's your water here that goes across. And I'm going to put that across there first. All right. And really get rid of all paint I can off it and, and, and do a dry brush across this. And just like get it.
Because it's in distance, you don't have to overly like, you know, overdo it. They're just background things. Now that's a little bit drier, this bit, I'm just going to go back over it with um, some darker, uh, different um, colouring. To re-emphasise the... There you go. Because it, it does dry 30 or 40 percent lighter than what you put it on. There you go. Right. And again, can you see these strong edges? You lost and found the column and you can get rid of certain bits and you know break it up a bit. Like that. Yeah. And it just gets rid of that it, uh, hard edge that you can sometimes get in the painting. Right, we're on to foreground now. We never thought we'd make it. So we've got we've got this bit here, which is a is grass. So uh, you always work light to dark. All right. So let's let's make a mix of uh, a, a lemon yellow. So we do the grass before we do the house. Yeah, we, we you always work from the background to the foreground. So there's the, oh, I'm, I'm not I'm not on about this grass. I'm okay. not on about this grass here. I'm on about this grass here. I gotcha. There's, there's grass there and there's grass there that's oh, that's in front right. of the house. So I'm going to get some lemon yellow and I'm going to make it nice and wet and watery. First of all, I'm going to put some water in it so that it, it like that. Yeah. Okay. So it's got a covering of water and then I'm going to go in and go like that. And then after that, put, no, I'll put a bit of blue in instead. Like that. And just break it up a bit. And let that do its thing. And leave it, leave it for a while. And and go elsewhere now and do exactly the same. Uh, wet that area that you want to paint, you know, with plenty of water. Get some light uh, light colours in first. And then this has a much darker area to it, so I'm going to um, put a different green in it, uh, mix in with a little bit of brown, so you've got a really dark kind of uh, green. So I don't, I don't know whether you can, you can't really see it because I'll see if I can get you, get that to go up there. Right, so it's got this really dark looking green. Can you see that? Um, and then it's almost as though this area is in shade somehow. And, and while we're while we're um, while we've got some of that paint and that's still wet, you can always put little bits of. Don't overdo it though, because once you've committed a dark colour to a light area, there's no going back. Right. Right. Now, literally, we've got the house to do. So, what what decision I've got to make is? Uh, all right. Before I go any farther on, I just want to knit some of that out so that that doesn't bleed into there. In fact, I'm going to dry that. And I'll dry that as well. Dry it. 
this building, if you look in the reference, it's all very white. But I'm, I am going to do something slightly different with it. Um, it. It might seem a bit weird, this, but to, to, to bring a painting uh, all consistent, you need a key colour in it. And, and, and what I've used a lot of already is is uh, this lemon yellow. So that I'm, I'm going to use that as a key colour throughout that. So I, I, I'm just going to get water. I'm going to I'm going to cover virtually all of it. Like that. Make sure I've got a uh, plenty of water on it. All that area, and we're going to start building building tonal values in. The, the the darkest area is that there and a little bit of that. Right. Because because light is coming in from there, and this bit is shaded. So, right. but first, we're going to still put the light color in, even into the dark areas, because that's the uh, starting point and this, this year I'm just gonna I'm not gonna be putting an awful lot of painting uh, paint on that bit there and now we've got that area got its light values in we want to start thinking about some mid-tones so what I'm thinking about is is something like um what do they call it uh yellow ochre or something like that although in this set i don't seem to have any yellow ochre unless that's yellow ochre i don't know uh so that's like a sandy color so uh, that will be my mid-tone so uh, the areas that will have mid-tone uh that bit like that and it's there I'm, I'm not I'm not putting it everywhere because it I, I want it all to naturally blend Just dabbing that off for a bit of control. And now we can start thinking about getting his dark tones in. But you notice I'm not doing like every little brick and every little crack and every little... I'm not. I'm, I'm just giving an interpretation of what it might look like. And you might need to do several layers of this to get this right. Take bits out and put bits in. And This is where you have to think about uh, when and when not to do uh, any more painting with it. So I'm going to Normally you'd let it dry, but I'm going to dry it with eater. How are we doing, everybody? I have nothing to say. <laughs> You're, you're, yeah. You're, yeah, well, at the end of the day, you're having yeah. a go and that's what matters. Regardless of whether it's, whether, it's, whether it's the world's best painting or, or whether not, you're having a go at it and that's absolutely what matters.
Right, let's uh, continue in a similar vein with that. So, uh, other areas that have that similar kind of thing is is that and that as well. And you notice how how I'm not I, I'm I'm not being like finicky and detailed and things like that. You must not do that when you're doing watercolor painting. Uh, go so detailed that you got you got to try and be loose with it because because watercolor itself is loose water is a loose uh, substance so you got to try and think in terms of that right there's a, a building there as well Let me just see if i can get some kind of differentiation there right now now we've got that in and that in and that in we're um i'm i'm thinking about shadows here now so right for the for the roof i'm just gonna i'm gonna dry brush that uh, if you notice on the actual um reference image you can see all the individual tiles you don't want to do that do not paint every individual tile just make your brush really dry and just stroke well get enough paint on your brush here come on stroke stroke like that then across And that is basically your first layer of your, your roof done. And, and you just build up on top of that with slightly darker colours. But don't, don't be painting individual little bits of detail just re-emphasizing them uh, what I now want to do with that assuming that because that were done dry brush it's going to be dry enough for me to start thinking about putting some shadows in that's that this area you've got your chimney there that's going to be dark dark uh, that's going to be dark um a few details like that bit of texture and uh, as you can see I'm, I'm not I'm not being massively deliberate it's it's very very loose what I'm doing there might be a little bit of shadow under there um, dependent on where you think the light is there might just be a bit of darkness there Uh, I'm going to uh, add a bit more of that and try and try and uh, in your painting as well try to like join things together if you can you know like areas like that and areas you know give it like a you know something that's coherent throughout of it coherent co no coherent and uh very quiet kind of uh painting experience isn't it 
Yes. I'm not. I'm not used to uh, e not hearing you all. I know yeah. everybody's being quiet because they're concentrating. Yeah, you see that. That's why I'm generally quiet. You see, uh, uh, I've got this little. There's some little furry animals here, but I think I've uh, I've budged. Anyway, I'm just going to suggest that there's some sheep here. I could talk. Mary can talk. <laughs> Mary, Mary's. Mary. Are you an experienced artist, though, Mary? You can. <laughs> no, I was saying I could talk. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You were saying how I mean, quiet everybody was. I'm usually talking when I shouldn't be. I was trying to shut up. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, but, but, I mean, uh, we're, we're not that far off end of actual painting, so um, I'm, I'm putting uh, the early parts of this uh, fencing it's got a little fence there and you don't have to be I mean honestly you're not you're not creating the fourth bridge here you're, you're um, just doing a little there you go it, it, it don't even have to look as though it it's all together it's it's my foot <laughs> my picture is barely discernible to be a, a building in the middle of the, of the wherever we are it's like yeah, it's what is island. Mm -hmm. Mine looks like what is this slop? Anyway, but Jerry, but that's so, that's okay. You know, that's where you are in your in your skill area. Don't criticize yeah. yourself. No, uh, uh, end it there. What you're doing is you're having a go, and that's the right right thing to do. Uh, uh, and slowly, I can't see slowly, it, Jerry. No, I don't want you to. I'm just looking uh, at it. I'm thinking my mother would. You're, be you're so a bit surely <laughs> focus more. You you focus more. And more, mm -hmm. and you'll eventually get those um, abilities to uh, say, "Yeah, I can alter that. I can alter this. I can do that." Mm -hmm. And you'll gain control of it. So don't worry about it. Everybody from a have a hard where, time. where they've got to learn the skills. I I have a hard time with the direction of the light and the shadows. Like I well, w what I do, right? I, I'll just. I mean, I sometimes forget when I'm in the middle of a painting, you can become micro focused mm -hmm. and, and just concentrate. Uh, don't do that. Look at the image as a whole. Right. And, and, and what I do is very bad. Uh, what, I, what I do uh, at the edge of my paper or somewhere, I give myself a visual reference mm -hmm. and I go like this. Okay. So that you know, yeah, that you remember that that's where I'm not good with shadows. I've never been. Light comes from there. Mm hmm. But now, now I think that's pretty close to being dry. I'm going to give it one last really dark tone in, in various areas all over, all right. over the building. So I'm going to build up a. a from all my dark colours, as many as I've got dark colours, uh, my browns and my dark blues and my dark greens, and I'm going to build that up, right? Still making it watery, but it's dark, and I'm going to go... And, and that's throughout me, uh, all of that building, just to give it that extra punch of darkness. Anywhere, anywhere that it needs to. Uh, might be a bit there. There you go. And that that for me is the the building itself done. Right. So now what I want to do is go back to my lights because I'm I'm going to do this grass here, and then that's a picture complete. I might want to come back to some areas over here and improve it, but as far as that's concerned, it's done really. So I'm going to go back to my key color again that lemon yellow. I'm going to wet me, wet me paint, uh, get some water, 
and flood that area with like that. And I'm also going to get some more water around there and do that. Water and this area. Make sure plenty of water. You're going to need lots for this. Lots of water. Lots, lots, lots. Right, let's now start get, getting some. I want that area to be very, very light and then coming up to here, splodge, splodge, splodge. Right, let's see if I can dry certain areas off and get rid of it. Just to give it some, a bit of randomness. Get some more of that and while it's wet. Pounce, pounce, pounce. Right. Now, let's move on to his midtones. Because it's wet, it'll just like kind of. Less detail, the farther away you get, more detail, the closer you are. But we'll come back over this area anyway. Now this area will be slightly dark because there's a bit of shading from the building. Let's see if I can uh, get a bit of definition there. Uh, and again, that's going to be it. Uh, this area here will be incredibly dark because I, th I think there's a bit of um, a bit of the building shade in that area, and to contrast that, just to make sure that uh, you can tell there's a difference, I'm going to put a lot of light area there. And then some more. Right. Start getting your darker areas in. How far are you guys off from um tossing it? <laughs> How far are you guys off from um, finishing? Um, yeah, I don't know. Looks pretty bad. I could call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, doing an awful lot more I can do with this painting now. So I I'm not far off. Uh, I'll get it dry and then give it another extra, extra bit of a coat. Well, it looks kind of interesting from the camera. Yeah. I, you know, it's showing me something that's darker here than it is here, and maybe that's okay. I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean? It's darker on this side than it is on this side. It's supposed to be, Barbara. It yeah, is. It is. Uh, uh, remember this side here is probably going to have a lot more light coming into it. Okay. Uh, that side here will have a tiny bit of shade. Okay. Because of the building. Okay. So you got it covered. Yeah. So I, I'm going to do. I just want to think of what I want to do for my roof. Well, remember what I did is I got a fairly dry brush. I got some grey paint, made a grey paint, and I don't want to go over it again because it'll mess no, it up. No, don't go over it again. Uh, and, and I like scraped it down with a dry brush, so you got very dry. Dry brush, okay. 
Yeah, yeah, let me just show you on this. Right. So, uh, very dry. So, I, I'm pushing it down as hard as I can. You see how it's making yeah. lines? Yeah, oh, I see. Like that. You want to go like that with it. But before it dries, you want to go as well like that. Okay. But don't do loads of it. You're not doing detailed work. You're just giving an impression. And there you go, that's a roof. That's all you need to do for roof. But if you want to add a little bit more uh, stronger, uh, stronger uh, value into it, right? Again, make it make your brush dry, and then now and again, just just add little flecks of. There you go, and that's the roof done. We we at it being finicky and every little square painted, because in watercolor painting you don't do that. Um. You don't overly mess about with um, with detail. You suggest it, and that's the important part: the suggestion. I'm just going to get some darker tones here in foreground, and that's just literally just faffing about with with brush like that, just to add texture. Mm, might go. Okay. I got it. Bit of splatting here and there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna call that finished. So yeah, it looked it came out pretty good. Yeah, it really did. Uh -huh. I thought it'd take a bit longer than what I thought it was going to do, but uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I might put a bit more punch into the um, into the clouds because it's probably not got enough. So I'm going to mix up some more uh, stronger air and uh, but don't lose any of that white. Alrighty then. Now, is there a bit up there as well? Might just introduce a teeny weeny bit of texture to that. Not much. Not there. And that's one of the great problems with watercolour as well, knowing when to stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm notorious for overdoing it. Here. 
Well, if you want, if you wanted, you know, in this foreground area, you could put some nice, pretty flowers rather I'm than just okay. grass. Uh, you could put blues and red splatty flowers in it. Uh, another another good technique is get your other end of your brush while that while these blobs are wet and go like that. And it's instant grass. Yeah, that's it. That's me done. I won't be a second, doll. Mm -hmm. I'll be back in a minute. Right. So normally, if you get if you get white in uh, in a in a set. It's used for tinting colour. For example, if I need a, a really light pink, I can't find a convenience colour that is the one that I need. Uh, you can't always water red down to the colour that you need it to be. So what you do is you add white to the colour uh, when you're mixing it. So uh, it, it, it tints the colour it gives it a lighter colour without it losing its, um, its, it's what they call its mass tone, if you know what that is. I'm done. So that's one way of doing it. Some, some watercolour artists will use white as an effect. Uh, when you've got a very wet area, you, you can splash white into it to like push colour away. But you, what you have to be careful of is white is not the same as the white on your paper. So it always looks a bit weird. That's why watercolour artists avoid it. Now, if you look at my clouds here, you can see that that's paper. My clouds are paper. I didn't touch that with white, but I've been touching my building with white because actually I like the texture that the white paint gives, but I do notice yeah. that I kind of have to go over it several times because the white tends to want to blend in with the color that's always there, which yeah, is okay because sure. these buildings are kind of a gray color anyway. So for me, what, what you, they are, yeah. Uh, yeah. what, what you um, what you might be best off doing rather than using white watercolour is gouache. Yeah. You'll find I don't have any gouache, but I did get out some ink, but it was a pearl mm -hmm. ink, but I, mm -hmm. I don't have any gouache, but I completely agree. Now uh, that's you've just reminded me. Um, I were going to talk about various types of watercolour paints, right? what you get okay. in right so under normal circumstances can you see these paints yeah you can you, you get them in tubes yes that, that 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 that's the tube form of watercolor paint paints and you get them in three standards uh, academic paint which is for children right and then you get student paints, which are for people who are serious uh, students of watercolour painting, which is your middle one. And you get professional paints, which is, they're very expensive, but they are for professional work. And, and they have different quality to the, the other two. But th th they all come in either tubes like these, or they come in these things called pans that is a full pan and that's a half pan 
Now, as uh, Mary said earlier, they do come in other formats as well, although they're not standard formats. Um, you can get sticks that are uh, like Daniel Smith's, for example, which is a, a stick of watercolor. Uh, it's like a, a stick of watercolor, but it's, it's, it must be bound in something. But they're, they're a little bit like, there are quite a few companies who do like water soluble pencils. They're, they're kind of like those, but Daniel Smith's more a stick of watercolor. Uh, you also get other watercolors that are uh, liquid form, like um, Hydrus by um dr martin's which is it's almost like an ink but in it's a watercolor uh again highly pigmented and you need a tiny little drop and you can use that for the entire painting but but these are the normal standard formats and uh, you can get them in sets or you can buy them individually and build up what I did when I first did my first professional set is I built built a, a set of these up uh, over a period of a few months because one of them can be, I don't know, probably around ten dollars. If not, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly how much they are in America, but they're about seven or eight pound for me to buy in UK. So I'm assuming that's around about ten dollars. Was that so, a professional brand, um, Ian, or was that? Yes, yeah, yeah that, that's that's Windsor and Newton. Okay, okay. Professional. Yeah, Ian, yeah, that's but, about what they're running. Those watercolor Daniel Smith watercolor sticks, they yeah. run. They're about the size of a fat Crayola, or maybe yeah. think of a nice long three-inch pastel, and mm -hmm. they cost around eleven dollars a couple years ago. They might have gone up a dollar to now. But yeah. uh, let me tell you, they last a long time. Oh, I, I mean, it's still. like working off of a long pan of watercolor, a three-inch pan of watercolor. I like them a lot. They're, they're very much worth their money. I wanted to say that Monica had a question. She All says, right. what, what level is between academic and professional tube paints? Student. So what level? If student quality paints. And so when you're out buying watercolor paint, mm -hmm. you, you can almost assume that the cheaper paints are going to be the student, student quality paints. They don't say. Yeah, well, it depends where you shop. Uh, yeah. the, some start at the academic level and they're generally very, very cheap and they're very, very, they're almost like, you know, when you were a kid and you had a, a piece of paper put in front of you and they give you some paints and you'd, that is virtually academic level, right? It, the, the more serious paints are a step above that, and and they're the, called the student paints, and and they're basically a, a a slightly lower quality version of professional paints, but they're a lot cheaper because they put they put fillers in them to you know, so that they don't have to put as much pigment and paint in it. But you do suffer the consequences for that. And that what best thing I did in watercolor, I, I automatically move forward with my painting tenfold when I moved on to using professional paints and professional paper. So, I would agree with that to a certain point because I know when I started using, when I was doing that acrylic April mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I was using, started out using the craft acrylics that then Marianne yeah. sent me some, mm -hmm. some heavy bodied, mm -hmm. you just artist professional paints and the difference is just, uh -huh. it's astounding. It's just, you know, and you just, you look at it and you, you the color. The color so vivid, it has so much pigment in it, and I would imagine that the watercolors are the same way. Oh, you, you'll, fi you'll, you'll find, you'll find the, the 
the level of pigment in a professional paint is tenfold more than what it is in a student paint. I'm not saying go out and if you knew, if you knew, learn how to paint first and use the student, use the, a good quality student paint. Um, a, a good quality student paint, right? Uh, is made in America, and I'm assuming you're mostly all in America. Is is M grams? They have a student. They have a student paint, uh, and and that is reasonably priced, but good quality. Uh, and if you learn off of something like that, then great. Uh, another brand I recommend that's cheap but is professional is what I've been using today, right? And it's um, White Knights. They are, if you can find them on um, Amazon or something like that. I think Dick Blake carries White Knight. Hmm? Dick Blake carries White Knight. Do they? Right. Yeah, I think well, so. Yeah, honestly, fantastic professional entry grade professional paint if, if you're wanting to step up from being student to pro quality i would recommend white knights and that's what i've used today are you speaking jerry you 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 you're muted I'm sorry. Yeah, I am. That's why, <laughs> that's why you're not answering me. Um, no. What was the name of that paint you said that was in America that was a good baseline paint? I didn't understand. Uh, a good the, the Their paint is uh, a, a, a one of the world's top professional paints, but they do a student range. Mm -hmm. And it's M, M. Graham's. Okay, I never heard of it. Anybody here ever oh. hear of that? M. Graham's. Yeah, that's they sell them. They they check Dick Blip sells several different mm -hmm. brands. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, and uh, what's that? Oh, somebody's holding landscape her. watercolor. Colleen. Oh, Colleen's holding her picture up. Landscape watercolor set. She's holding that up. Oh, very good. And what's oh, that? That's... Who's that by? Un un unmute uh, yourself. Can I unmute you, Colleen? Colleen I'm going to unmute you. Can you tell us who that's by? Yeah. This this is by the M Grams he's talking about, and I didn't actually use it on this painting. You can, I like them because you can buy them in sets, like yeah. this one's landscape, which I probably could have used here, and then dual tone. And I like that they separate them for you when you're beginning. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and you don't know what to use together. And yeah. I bought these yeah. on Amazon, Great. and they and I like how they're done for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't have to think about what color sets that you put. If you've got experience in painting, you can you can put your own sets together. Mm -hmm. But if you fairly uh, know, getting a getting a set is a good idea. Monica, I put a link in the in the uh, chat. Um, yeah, that's great. And honestly, yeah, and you can't that. really go you can't really go wrong if you're wanting to make a start in in watercolor painting. They're one of the best companies on planet. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, if you take it to the other extreme and you want really top end, mm -hmm. you go and you get something like uh, what they call it, Daniel Smiths. Mm -hmm. But by the time you're buying Daniel Smiths, you ought to be a person who knows what you're doing with them. Mm -hmm. I was because they are very expensive. Yeah. I was playing with I was playing with Rembrandt for this. Right. And I was combining that and because I was trying to copy the colors you were using, um, and I yeah. was also was playing with core. Yeah, uh, and again, they 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 are both. I mean, Rembrandt by is that by Royal Talon? Yes. Yeah, they they're another good quality professional watercolor. Uh, although it, I don't know how easily got hold of the will be in America. Mm -hmm. Did you get them off of uh, Amazon? 
I did. I got them off of Amazon, and yeah. uh, they came with this case already yeah. in here. They aren't the uh -huh. two. You know, I mean, they came already. I mean, that that is a, a very serious watercolor investment. That. Mm. Yeah. They're not cheap, are they? Especially over in USA for you. Yeah. Uh, but the, but the, again, they are one of the world's top watercolor paints. They they are uh, they are uh, uh, Europe's version of um, Daniel Smith's. I oh. would say. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. I chose wise then. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, they're a top brand, uh, Rembrandt's by uh, Royal Talon. Yeah. Awesome. So really, Royal Talon's also makes the FW inks, I think. No. FW inks are made by De La Rone. Uh, I think I think Ian's right. Yeah, I think, uh, FW definitely. I thought it was Royal Talons. No, uh, Royal Talons do do an ink very similar no. to it. That look the bottles look pretty much similar as well. So I definitely think I'm gonna work on the clouds with the gouache. I think I'm going to try that. You could do, yeah. But yeah. be careful because you can very easily mud things up by... Uh, you might be better off. Uh, I, I tell you what is a good tool if I can find it. Do, do you have a magic eraser? Oh, uh, I do have that, a, yeah. A, a magic clean. Uh, wet that with some clean water and, and, and see if you can pull it away. Oh, good idea. Interesting. Ra rather, than, rather than add more paint, because the more paint you paint on, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the more it looks overworked. Oh, okay. no, and and don't, don't scrub with the magic eraser. Don't scrub. Dab. Dab, 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 dab. Those magic erasers are good for everything. Yeah. Uh, it's perfect for watercoloring. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? Because I'd love to do a show and tell. Yeah. Any questions? Make okay. sure your waters, uh, make sure your waters nice and clean before you use that magic eraser. Okay, I cut that it has out. To be clear water. Oh, clear. Got it. Yeah. Should we do um, a show and tell, Ian? Yeah, you can Great. do because yeah, I'm. Okay. I'm um, Done and sorted. Really. Oh, okay. other than I mean, if if you if we're not quite ready, I'll just do an overrun of what we've done. Okay. Today. Okay. So we'll go back to the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Um, what we did is we said right co uh, control. You can control in, uh, your paint by putting your water down first. And wherever wherever you dab your wherever you dab your paint in the water, that's where it goes. That's wet in wet. Your other control system is uh, your paint being wet, but your paper being dry. So it only goes where you brush it, as long as there's nothing wet near it. Your, your final control system. Is if you if you've got too much water, you just dab a bit, right? So there's no, it won't leak away. So that will control. Oh no! Just a second. Nobody ever knows. Your your final uh, situation. Uh, sorry, your next bit is application. You can apply paint in a flat wash, which just goes like that. And you don't you don't leave the brush doesn't leave the surface. It goes all the way along. You can put a, a graduated wash where you put your paint down first, lift it up, put some water on it. 
and then go across, lift it up, put some more water on it, and it slowly but surely gets lighter and lighter and lighter. That's a graduated wash. Then you have a variegated wash where you have more than one colour. Uh, one across there, one across there, and between it you put some water and you let it flow into one another. And that's a variegated wash. And then wet into wet, which we destroyed. Uh, but it, it, you, you create a wet area and you drop various colours in and they all blend. But we destroyed that to show how you can make a grey. So that were it. That's what we did there in a control and application. And then we went on to do the painting, which demonstrates some of those things that we've done. So it was a great lesson, Ian. It was yes, really it was. Cool. I loved it. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much you. for showing us. I'm going to stop the recording now and then I'm going to, um, so I'm going to stop. So thank you so much, Ian. Mm -hmm. and then, all right. All right. We're recording. We're going to do some show and tell and um, who would like to show their work? Anyone want to volunteer? All right. There's Colleen's work. Oh my gosh. Mountain coming up. Wow. That really helped. I was able I'm having to do this man. I'm having to do this manually. I was able to lighten, getting some light in there with this. This works mm -hmm. really good. So okay. it works well, that, did it? It works best with good, really good quality paper, by the way, that. So I had, to keep I had trouble duplicating the marks you made down here. Yeah. Well, that all that is is a matter of just continuing. At one Now it's dry. Go over it again with a slightly darker area. Same technique and build it up. And and what you need to do as well on top of that, you know, end of your brush, you need to, once you've flicked little bits on, like a little flicky kind of process, just get the end of your brush and, and like, like scribe into it. You, you know, like a... a okay. Uh, Colleen, did you trace um, the photograph, or did you just do that freehand? I tra I cheated. I traced. Okay, I'm just curious because <laughs> it's really pretty awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. It's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you've done really well with that. You've got all, all the elements mm -hmm. that are necessary for it. Yeah, it looks, looks good, Colleen. Very nice. Do, just think, Tom, we're in a live situation and uh, we're painting as, make it nice and wet. Okay, yeah, I've not seen any difference. It needs to be re really juicy and wet and, and just flick it and move it about a bit. Like just haphazard? Much, much, yeah, haphazard, but much more. Put your brush down on it hard. <laughs> and, um, that's it. Now, now turn your brush round. No, no, turn it round to the other end, your other end of your brush, opposite end. Oh, opposite, opposite end, end. Of the handle. The, stick. the handle, yeah, yeah. the handle. The handle on the brush. Yeah. Uh, no, the, turn it round. Opposite. Use the handle to make marks. Oh. Use it quickly, you have to do it quickly. The handle? Yeah. Flick it, use it, use it, flick. <laughs> flick, flick, flick. Flick, flick, flick. Flick, flick, flick to make little grasses. Yes. Oh, that's very oh. cool. Oh. Grape well, maybe would have been a better word. Scrape. It, it, it had probably gone just slightly too dry, but yeah. if you get it wet uh -huh. and build them up in little bits, yeah. you know, cool. go to that's another cool. area now and, and do another area. Oh, yeah. that really made a difference. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, the brush has more than one one part to it. Some brushes are made specifically to do that. Mm. Oh wow, that's clever. Yeah, that's great. Your your picture is just beautiful. Yeah, now she's gonna right. go to oh. town here. Okay, now I yeah, go on, go on, go on. Yeah. Uh, 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 make it more random as you're doing it. Flick. Uh, it's really nice if you like flick paint on as well. Yeah. Like you pretend like it's grass blowing in. Yeah. Blop, 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 and then just like put your put. Yeah. It, it's about making it smaller, and that's just for your foreground. It's awesome. Now you can put other colours in it to but, to give it even more 
Oh, so like some lighter color, so that way you yes. Jerry, why what? don't you go ahead and unmute everybody so that they can talk too? Because yes. some of them are saying it's nice, and mm-hmm. Holly said she got as far as the water, so <laughs> why don't you unmute everybody so that they can <laughs> say, oh, it's nice. <laughs> Holly comes to my stream. I didn't know she was. You might want to put a little bit of slightly dark blue in it. Dark blue, okay. Yeah, well, it's you know, don't, don't just apply it. Just just flick it onto it. You know, flick 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 flick. flick, 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 flick. Okay. Flick. Make sure you've got plenty. Of, you, <laughs> your, your brush is juicy, as in it's got lots of paint on it. Lots of that's it. Guess flatty. Oh, look at her. Oh, yeah. wow. um, now, turn your brush around and, and, and drag it through. Drag it through those bits that you've just splattered. Okay. No, just from the bits that you've splattered. Okay, just here, which would be my yeah. spot. No, down. Down. Yeah. Grass goes down, doesn't it? Up and down? Yeah. Up and down. Oh, shoot. Uh, j- just, on the, just on the bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> flick. Yeah. Okay, flick. and then and then up and down. down. Okay. The flicks. Uh, and you can do that and put little bits of blue and yellow and red. Oh, and there can be flowers. It looks like little tufts of grass that way. Yeah. Little wildflowers. Yeah. It looks pretty awesome. A, 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 yeah. a dark blue in in it will will help it tonally speaking because you will see all in the foreground you will see loads and loads of colours. Mm-hmm. Even dark areas, and the farer you get away, the less you see colors. <laughs> that is awesome! How fun is this? Oh, Very nice. Oh, oh, it's it's great! That. That now, yeah, Thank like you. some variations, and it doesn't look just like a, a kid painted it, where it was just like. <laughs> right, I'm not showing. That's it. <laughs> that, well, that's all it needed. It just needed a couple more layers. Yeah. And don't think that once you've painted it, that's that's it done. You, you need to put other layering over it. Oh my to, to give it a sense of depth. I it's have flicks in like my clouds too. <laughs> I mean, that's if, okay. if, it, if it's that critical, what you do is you just put a piece of paper in in the area that you don't want. Mm. Oh, you that would have been it, smart. You know, just to mask it. So cover that up and then yeah oh my god yeah that'd be better this is tip time <laughs> we're going well, telling tips i mean yeah. it's not as though you can't get rid of them by just dabbing some of that magic sponge over it anyway mm-hmm. okay awesome well, and then it makes go. it look like layers of uh grasses yes. are like growing and you get the depth ah i get it it's wonderful. So you just you just need it. You just need your pain to be. She's never gonna stop. A, She's gonna a, call a, a, bit, a bit more work to it. Scraping you and you go, calling. Extra bonus lesson. <laughs> that, that was perfect. Thank you. Right. Oh, like, well, thank oh, you. Oh, so it, it, has, has that answered your question for you? Yes. Happy. <laughs> Although you will get splatters all over everything. I know she's making a mess on her table, but who cares? In the name oh, of my hands, my arms, <laughs> my on my face. <laughs> Anybody else want to show their their right. work? I'll, I'll show. Well, well done. Well on, done, Barbara. Fine. Barbara, I want to ask a question. Barb, wait. Right. I can't find you. Hold on a second. Here you are. All right, let me put you in the spotlight. All right, Barb. Go oh, oh wow! Oh my gosh. Okay, so oh, is that look, you, I did a no no, Ian. Oh, I went over it. I what? went over it with a pen. A pen? <laughs> yes. There's nice. nothing wrong with that. You can call it a pen and wash. Oh, look how pretty it's with gorgeous. a pen and a dog. Yeah. So you've created your own interpretation. Yeah, I did. Gosh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna put a uh Double door here. Well, so they yeah, can look out there, on their little lake. There you go. Oh my gosh, Barb. Every well, Barb, your colors more, are very soft. Your, 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 your painting in it is in a much more exotic place than it is probably Scotland, this where it was painted, isn't it? Yeah, spot. your colors are very soft. They're very, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. very soft. Very 
and you sketched yours out, right, Barb, ahead of time? Yeah, I just sketched it because my, my picture wasn't the right size, so I just had to put it down there. It's gorgeous. I love it. Okay, so it's not it's not a no no to add the pen strokes. Uh, no, as long as, long as you're subtle, as long as you're subtle with it, look up pen and wash. Okay, uh, and you'll find that watercolor artists use pens to uh, do illustrative artwork with watercolor and pen. Okay, so yeah, so because I I think I want to add some pen lines to this and maybe my clouds. Like in the um, I, uh, you know with soft, you know with soft, uh, cloudy type stuff. I'd leave it with the cloud, and only do very, very, very tiny, thin, thin line in the background. The closer right. you get, the closer you get, the stronger the line. So the things in the background should should not have any lines on it. Okay, not yeah? no lines. Okay, yeah. Uh, and okay. that'll help with the sense of depth. All right. Wonderful. Yeah. Gosh, Barb, thank you so much for sharing. Well, this was great. great. Very different colors as well. Anybody else want to share? I've never done this before in my life. I'm so proud of myself. I'll go. Barb, Monica. who said that? Monica. All right. Gosh, great, Barbara. I you've never done that anything, Barb. No, I haven't. Barbara, you, you're oh, my God. God. That's impressive. Yes. All right, Monica, it's your turn. Oh, Barbara, your painting is fabulous. I left a little note that pen and wash is, it's a classic among watercolors and Ian knows what he's talking about. So. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Absolutely, You're in yeah. great company. Have a go at it. It's a really interesting uh, yeah. way of doing it. Um, Ian, thank you so much for this lesson. I was making some notes and then I started playing along, so now I have some little yeah. swatches. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Great, that's a great idea. Yeah, because then it will actually help me so I can see what it's supposed to look like. My, my gray, gray dated is going to need a little practice, but I've got the general <laughs> gist here. Yeah. And then I got a splotchy on my variegated, um, my, no, my uh, wet on wet, because this wasn't yeah. fully dry and I touched it by accident. And oh, there, right. what, what, yeah, yeah that's, called, that's called a backwash or a cauliflower. Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> so if I, touch, if I touch it while it's still wet and lift off the paint, then, then we get cauliflower. Yeah. Okay. I'll make you, sometimes you want that. <laughs> sometimes you want that as a technique. Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm just making a quick note here. Cauliflower, and then I'll, I'll, you know, make a that, That's because but... water is being reintroduced to something that's still drying. Okay. That's helpful to know because I, I just, I muck about mm -hmm. with watercolors. So oh, having these about. I like those. So, so what, what have you used today? Yeah, what, Monica. What okay, what yeah. Um, I've studied a little art, but I never studied watercolor. And I put in the comments earlier that what I do is I kind of approach it like it's a wet color pencil. So having these techniques is going to be a lot more helpful in the future. I know sometimes if I have extra paint, I can add a little water to after the fact and wash it away. Um, I've played with different kinds of watercolor paints. Right now, my favorite pan paints are the Jack Richeson. Right. And this okay. is, is this is a really nice set of 24 because what happens is you open it and then you lift out the tray. Oh, nice. Say so you have wow. Yeah, you have all of these paints and then you can kind of use this as a palette so you can see I've already been mixing colors in the past. So a have you swatched those? A lot of crafters uh, will probably use uh, something like that. Yeah, because like I said, I, I just play around. I don't okay. have, well, I have a really old set of tubes my um, mother gave right. me ages ago, and the tube paints are still fairly good. Actually, they, I mean, they, they don't look chalky, so they look, they look okay, actually. They've got yes. a bit of a glaze on them. Yes, okay, so I thank you for bringing that part up, because one thing I wanted to mention that I have learned when I've played with other watercolor paints is the cheap yeah. sets. Yeah. They're powder-based, and it leaves a chalk resist. Uh, you know, uh, residue. Yeah, chalkiness on it, yeah. I, it does, yeah. I hate that. It is, it's horrible. It's, it, it, it's a filler that they put in it for cheapness. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, and you can brilliant. tell you, you can tell that it ain't got that because it's got that almost glossy glaze on yes. the on them. Yeah, yeah, if you look, they've got a, like a slight glossiness to them. Yeah, so now if, you can if, see if, the shine. If they like, like that, they're fine. 
they'll be fine them yeah you can see a, a, a glaziness yeah you can see the shimmer as i'm kind of playing with yeah. the light here yeah mm -hmm. and and this kind of paint is generally known as um semi-moist here in the states i don't yeah. know what Called? Yeah, that's, that's what it's normally called, yeah. Okay, so they're semi-moist, and it will usually say on the container. Mm -hmm. Okay, but some of the cheaper cool. ones, they look really cute mm -hmm. and colorful, but I found that they are powder-based. It leaves a residue mm -hmm. after the fact, and you can start brushing off. They're basically, they're basically just tempura paint. Yeah. 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 Just not as uh, brilliant in color what as real. Little kids get given when they're at school to play with. Yes, yes. So, so be careful not to get them because they're not appropriate. Yeah, that's that's something I, I, I share with some people when they start asking because I, I like the semi moist because it dries better. It dries. That must mean that must mean they uh, have honey in them. Not all do. I don't know that this does. The M gram that you talked about on their yeah. website they say honey based, and I yeah. think there was another brand. I used to work in an art supply store until fairly recently. Um, there was another brand, I don't know if it was Rembrandt or not, or something else that also has honey in there. Uh, Sennelier. is known for it, yeah. Thank you. So it's M. Graham and Sennelier. They have honey-based watercolor in their paints. I'm not sure exactly. Well, M. Graham says something about it on their website, so you can go yeah, and read it. And I left yeah. that link here. But um, I guess there's something about it that's more natural, so it dries better and yeah. blends. Well, blah, 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 it, blah, it helps blah. in all sorts of ways. Yeah. So let's have a look at your painting then. Okay, so um, I printed it out on 80 weight cardstock paper. Right. So it's not really watercolor paper because I just, I, I didn't, I, Jerry had a blog and I was listening to it this morning. She's like, oh, and trace it off on watercolor paper. I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm not going to have that kind of time because it was like 9.30 already. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to print it on cardstock. Um, my boyfriend was trying to kind of play with some of it to try and remove some of the gray part. Um, but then I forgot that our printer starts to go off the rails when water is applied. <laughs> right, you, know, you know, if you want to, if you want to do it, do what I did. Uh, put it up on your screen, get a piece of tracing paper or a piece of... Uh, you, you know uh, the type of paper you use for uh, greaseproof paper? Oh, like put it on your screen, put it on your screen, tape it up, and just trace it off of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I wound up printing it on cardstock, and yeah. then I wound up using some paper towel because um, it wasn't fully drying, so I just smeared some of the ink around to give it a little mm. gray underneath. Did you have fun, Monica? I had fun. That's all that <laughs> and because watercolor is really about impression, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, well, that's that, that's that, wonderful. That is, yeah. so I was working from the photograph. You, you I, the, I had it here, like, in the corner of my screen, and I oh. screen shared if I wanted. So I was trying to capture the darkness that was at the top yeah. of the photograph. The clouds are so white. And then, like, which side is it? Okay, I noticed in the photograph that, like, there was a lot of light happening here, and, yeah. and the mountains, the mountain mm. geography was really gray compared to the other yeah. side where it was yeah. more brown. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, what, you call, that's what you call uh, atmospheric perspective. When you go backwards, it, it goes grayer. Yeah. When you come forward, it, it, it goes more colorful and more adjusted in tonal value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's something I always like. worth, uh, but I, I like that. It's like, it's like got a quick kind of um, expressive, mm. loose feel. Right. To it. Yeah, if if Very I'm as well. trying to just capture something really quickly with watercolor, that's what I generally shoot for mm. that way. I mean, for me, it's not that far off using up press paper, mm. yeah. right? Because that's that that has little or no texture to it. Right, right. Uh, because it's it, cardstock, it, it it's like what you like get from a press paint, uh, paper painting. Yeah, so so the cardstock is smooth like hot press, so it doesn't have any yeah. texture to it. But you can't go over it too much with the water because then it starts oh. to peel apart. Well, that's the difference yeah. between that card and, and hot press paper. You can keep going over it with yeah. hot press paper. But if that's all you've got, then you've done well. I mean, I believe it or not, that's what I started off. 
I got yeah. some, I got some crafting uh, crafting card, and I did some painting on that, and and that's how I started. Yeah, I mean it's, it's great for just playing around. It's yeah, it's fantastic, it. and you know if you're traveling and you really did want to just capture really quickly the essence, mm -hmm. yeah. the impression. Mm -hmm. This is great stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. That's wonderful, that's, Monica. Thank you. So that's what I was trying to great. do really, because once once the ink started smearing everywhere, I'm like, okay, well, forget it. I'm not going to get a really great one, but I can mm -hmm. still make a good impression and play around mm -hmm. with learning some of the color techniques mm -hmm. and right. And just imply, you know, the roof thing happening. And well, Monica, Mary was saying that she was deliberately using water soluble ink. Ah, and then working that into her design. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with it being a kind of mixed media type of watercolor. Watercolor is just one element within the painting. If right. you want to make it more mixed media, by all means, go <clears> for it. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted, I could probably just add some of my watercolor pencils to make a little more defined leafiness and green, grassy. Yeah, yeah it's another way to, or the what you're wanting to achieve, but I mean, the thing is, it's a bit of a juxtaposition this, because in the foreground, you, uh, you want detail, but at the edge, you're wanting it to fade out as though it, that's the end of the painting. So you've got to be careful not to put too much detail at the edge. Yeah, which is which is what you've done. You've you've actually made it go fade away. Okay. So that helps you go uh -huh. back into the that helps you go back into the um, into the building. Okay. If, if there were too much detail in for in foreground, it'd compete with the the, the house. Okay, so that makes sense. The fact that you've like let it all like softly fade out towards you is okay. a bonus. Yeah, looks great. great. This is really useful, Ian, to have your yeah. feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ian, for this lesson. Because just like I said, being able to do this means that I'll, I'll have some more options with some of my other... Yeah, I mean, later. if anything, if you want to really practice, do that thing that we did at first is the first step to do. Yeah. Get control of the things that we did at the beginning. Okay. You know, that practice thing that we did. Yeah. And then you can move on to more complex paintings. And doing fairly small to start with. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. This has been really great. Thanks, Monica. That's um, great. I can yeah. see it now. Go to the gallery yeah. view and then and then touch her. There video. we go. Gosh, man. There we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, wow. You've got you. So got yeah, that, yeah, I want to right talk now. about the pen and ink though because. You'll find that I'm very much an urban sketcher. And if you watch urban sketching, you will see a lot of pen and ink drawings. Yes. And so just using pen and ink comes natural for me um, mm -hmm. because I do a lot of urban sketching. I don't do a lot of big, wide water coloring. I, mostly because I don't have the space. This is 15 by 11 by 15 paper. Yep. So, and I... I did this building, and because I'm working off of my camera, I don't see too much of the detail, so I wanted to practice this building a little bit more. I'm noticing that there's some things that I missed. There's some sheep out here, and there was yeah. a fence here. I couldn't see all that on my phone. Uh -huh. I could barely see this little building over in here, but I had a lot of fun doing it. I think it's wonderful, Mary. Look at that. I like, I, like, I like the compositional arrangement with the other building. Yeah. It really works. It's kind of fun it. just to plop that other building in front of it. <laughs> what kind of um, watercolor paint did you use, Mary? I can't hear you, Jerry. What did you use? Um, you know, what paint did you use? I used two things. I used the Winsor Newton Cotterman, which is, uh, I think, a student grade. It or is, yeah. uh, might be, a, it's not the professional kind. No. It's, it's a good, it's kind a good to get it oh, off. Right. I used these. And then I also used these that were gifted to me by Deborah Mayo. So mm -hmm. these are the, um, oh, what's her name over in Australia? Name escapes me right offhand. Oh, what the caller. Yeah, I know what you Ellie? mean. Jane Davenport. Oh, Jane Davenport. Davenport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What the decadent, decadent pie? So, and these colors are very, they, this blue, this blue is a very pretty blue. I love mm. these colors. This is yeah, a new earth tone palette. Like so this is the earth tone palette, and I guess this is called the bright. So 
One is Brights and one is Earth Tone, and I get them mixed up. I, I, I think one's called <laughs> Decadent Pie, isn't it? As, as oh, well there it is. Mary, do you, sketch, do you sketch out your um, land? I did sketch it because I couldn't print it off. I sketched it, and of course, it's using a larger paper. Okay. So, yeah, I did sketch it. Gorgeous. Just beautiful. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? And, um, Go ahead, Deborah. I'll ask, my, so I'll ask my, you that question again, then. This <laughs> what, is my ugly painting. <laughs> oh, look. oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Look at that. I love it. That's good. I love wow. the contrast. Yeah. You know, you, know, you know what that gives me? It's got that, like, uh, strong line artwork. Mm -hmm. it's, got, it's, it's, it's got a, a really... It's got a real feel of structure to it. If you if yes. if you see on the the yes. side of the wall, it's yeah. got definite strong lines. It's and, and, yes. again, very very strong, expressive. Against them strong colours, that works really well. That's cool. Deborah, did you do your um, sampling on the back? I saw something on the back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what you want to do with that, Deborah, is write on them. Write on them which ones they are, and then you'll remember. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. It's good fun. Right, it's good it's fun. nice to see you in the flesh anyway. I see you're around in different groups and that, but that's yeah. the first time I've bumped into you in the flesh, as it were. Yeah, I float around. <laughs> it's good to have a face with the name. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. We all float around. We're, we're all every place. All right. We're all floaters. So, AJ, did you show yours? You don't want to see this on the recording. Oh, and Ian, Ian, we've been on pause. Thank you so much, Ian, for showing us how to do the watercolor. Yeah, thank yes, you. Yes, Ian, this has been it. wonderful. Yeah, I loved it. Right, thank you. All right. Just enough information. So all the students did well there to say some of them are uh, first time watercolorist and uh, at this point I'd like to thank Jerry at Recycled Parts for Heart uh, for letting me come on and do this tutorial for her group and uh, hopefully we'll do another one another time but uh, I'd like to thank you now for uh, being here and watching this video so if you haven't already, please subscribe and uh, click the uh, reminder button, the little bell, and you'll get to see more of my videos that come out on a weekly basis. So we'll see you later. Keep parting. Bye.